In this tutorial series, I'm going to teach you how to implement this game system into your game with the minimum of coding knowledge. Okay, so you'll notice it's automatically spawned in another five objects for me to collect. Phone rings again, and if I answer it, you'll see another message flashes up and it would try to play another audio file. And again, it's spawned in five more objects. Let's see how this was done. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to bring up text messages when the player approaches the phone and how to put these in spawn points around the map. So let's get stuck in. So you may recall in the first tutorial, we brought in the GM script over here and we attached it to the first person controller. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the message list here. In a similar way to the phone controller that has a message size of four and contains four audio clips on the GM script, the message list here, we're also going to give a size of four, which is going to create four slots into which we can copy and paste our text or just type any old free text. If you're one of my students and you've already written and recorded your text, then you can simply copy it from Word and paste it into each of these slots. Let's play test this and see what happens. So if I just kill the sound for a second, you can see in the top corner here, it says any old free text, but that doesn't really look very good. That doesn't look like my text looked in the beginning of this tutorial. So I need to fix that. I need to make my text look better. So the first thing that's missing is the text didn't appear in a box. The box is controlled by these numbers here. These two numbers at the bottom control the size of the box. These two numbers at the top control the position of the box. So I'm just going to make the box start 10 units in from the side on the X and 10 units down from the top. So it won't appear in this corner here. It'll appear more like here a little bit further down. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself about 600 units across the page there. And I'm going to give myself maybe 400, 400 units of depth. The second thing I'm going to do, if I open up the style, is I'm going to need to give it a background. So you can see here, I've expanded normal background. At the moment, there's nothing. I've downloaded some simple parchment texture off the internet, but you could download anything at all. And I'm gonna drag it into that space. I'm also gonna set the font down here, quite simply, to Arial. But if you want to download fonts from a font site, drag them into the assets folder, then you simply drag them into this box here and it will display in whatever font you have chosen. The final thing is to give my font some size. Let's start with 20 and go and test it. I'm just going to move my player so that I can test this quicker. I'm going to move them so that they can do a clean run all the way along here. I've kept the sound off because I'm not testing sound for the moment, but I'm going to go in here and let's see what flashes up. Any old free text, whatever was in that box, flashes up right there. Now there are lots of other things that I could do here if I wanted to. So I'm going to do this in test mode so you can see in real time what my changes mean. But none of these changes will save when I come out of test mode. So you'll need to make sure that when you make any changes, this box is not blue. If, for example, I change the content offset and I start dragging that, you'll see how it moves it from the side of the screen. So I might want to set that five units in there and five units down there. So it doesn't start right at the top corner. Also, if you have lots and lots of text, it might be shooting off the side of your page here. In order to fix that, you simply check word wrap and it will come down to the next line of text. Maybe my font size is too small. I can see in real time what size font would be required with the font I've chosen in order to fill my screen. And in fact, if I make it very big, you'll see how the word wrap works. It brings it straight down. If I was to turn that off, it would shoot off the side of my screen like so. There are lots and lots of other things that you can do in the settings of the style monitor here, but I'll leave you to play around with those in your own time. The final thing that we're going to work with today is called the spawn script. The spawn script is going to create some spawn points for the new objects, I'm calling them crumbs, to be spawned in at. Now when working with spawn points, it's often useful to use game object, empty game object. So if I create my empty game object, you'll see here in the inspector that it doesn't really have much information. It just contains a location. And if I click off, I can't even see it in my world. As my light, if 
I just move my light out of the way so it's completely out of the way of my scene. There's my game object, but I can't really see what it is. If I try and frame on it, there's nothing there to frame on. Empty game objects are invisible points that exist in the game world, but that you can't see. And they're really useful for using the spawn points. So I'm going to call this one spawn point. And I'm then going to duplicate that spawn point. And I'm going to drag the new spawn point behind the phone. I'm going to duplicate that. Drag it to the side over there. Duplicate that. Drag it to the side over there. And then I'm going to duplicate these two spawn points here, and I'm going to drag them out like that. If I take a quick overhead view of my spawn points, one, two, three, four, five, these are the areas that I want my new game objects to spawn in at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these spawn points the child of the master spawn point. And then I'm going to attach the spawn script to the master spawn point. Immediately you'll notice two things in the inspector. First of all, spawned crumb, game object. It needs to know what's the object that I'm spawning in. Now in order to make this work, I'm going to need to take one of my spheres here, and I'm going to rename my sphere crumb before I do this, and then drag it down into the assets folder. As soon as I do that, I'm creating what's called a prefab. And a prefab is an object that comes along with all of the things I've put on it. So it's got the renderer material, it's got the curve, it's got the script, it's got the audio source, it's got everything. Then I can go back into my spawn script and it, when it says what am I spawning, you're going to spawn this prefab. I drag it into the game object there, we're going to spawn some crumbs. Finally, my spawn point here has a size. I want to spawn five objects in and the scripts that you're using in this tutorial are set up precisely for five objects. So I'm going to create a size of five, and it gives me five bits of information here. So I'm going to lock my inspector here, so that it doesn't change this panel, and then I'm going to drag the first spawn point into the top there, the second spawn point into this one here, and so on and so forth, until I have filled all of my spawn points. If I switch my sound back on, I should now be able to go in and test my scene. I know I shouldn't have clicked on it. I know I shouldn't have clicked on it, but the link said like and share, and I did. And now I regret it. Now I think he's I'll after just me. Back away. So I'm this we can see. Cups. I'm going to leave these messages. Switch the sound off. It has indeed spawned in five new game objects exactly where I wanted them to go. And if I turn the sound back on and go and collect those five objects, sure enough, the phone rings again. And if I was to approach the phone, it would try to play whatever the second message is. I haven't written any text and it would try to play the second audio file. I haven't put any audio files in. Using this system and these scripts, you should be able to populate your game with any object that you choose for the player to collect. You should be able to write any text message and attach it, if I just unlock this, and attach it in the space of the GM script down here. You should be able to attach your audio files to the phone here and you should be able to have a fantastic story-based game. I've been Dr. H on behalf of Octobeard Media. I hope you've enjoyed this short round of 10-minute Unity tutorials. Thanks for listening.